Let's let's keep this down to about a half an hour, because yep. the, the attention span of yes. our classmates is getting slower. It's shorter and shorter. Yes. <laughs> oh oh yeah. Shoot, I I have a surprise here. Uh oh, look out! I want to get it for one of your topics. bring it up in one of mine okay so i've got those ready and i will be able to scan those and put them in so people will be able to see them all right um shipyard models yes you started to say something when i said oh nobody knows why they were really created do you have something different? Well, knowledge. The only knowledge that I have is the Admiralty models. If you if you look at them, uh, the bottoms of the, the ribs, the ribs are usually gone, and you see the ribs. Oh, the planking's gone, and the ribs are there, right? The ribs are showing the construction of the uh, ship itself. Right. I'll, right. I'll put I'll put an insert picture up to show people what we're talking about. And um, that's the way some of them were built built just with just the ribs and the decking and the mast and stuff on it to show where the cannon would go, right. the sleeping quarters and so on and so forth below decks. Uh, other ones were built. Uh, from basically the water line up. They're called so, water line models. Well, they no. That's, that's, line, what, that's what George Reed calls them. Okay. Water line models are usually cut off at the uh they cut the base off on on my side where the plastic modelers come in when they do a diorama or something like that. Right. So that the they don't have to fool around with the, the hull laying in the right. sea structure. Right. Now, the difference to that is, is that if you look at some of the um, dioramas that were done uh, during, not during, but uh, based on World War II, where they show uh, destroyers at, at full speed Historic running across goal. the sea right. and the uh, depth charges being dropped and exploded underneath, that's a different story. That's a, that's a full hull model. Um, whereas, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're saying a full hull model is one that's in what looks like the water, but it's yeah, a block of wood that's shaped to look like water. A block of wood that's shaped like uh, water right. it would usually be cut off. The bottom of the hull would be cut off so it could be set down in the... Okay. In, but, in the water itself. And besides, nobody used, well, I won't say nobody, but nowadays they use a piece of, a piece of foam and shape it and then put, uh, it's not hydrocal. Um, yeah, but something hard like that that's shapeable. Uh, they use epoxy. Right. They use a uh, medium, a paint a, medium. A, a resin type material that you can you can work with a putty knife or a spoon to get your waves in oh that's cool that's cool you know <coughs> that type of deal and then, then you technology put, yeah then you put in your uh bow wakes and so on running down the sides of the ship right that's right. about as much as i can tell you about ship modeling well what's what's interesting is that 
if you care to look at the George Reed videos, and they're they're not really how tos; they're more philosophical. George Reed was an um, a painter, an artist, and he was teaching painting at the university level in England. And somewhere along the line, he got into ship models, and he got hooked, and he gave up paint. Well, he was actually teaching painting and pottery. So he was going, he was changing medium, yeah. media. Media. And, and, and there, and what was so cool was that he would take a block of wood for the, what I call the waterline models. And he was shape, shaving off, gouging it to make it look like waves and then painting it. Yes. Yeah, it was so, so cool. Anyway, I, I will see if I can drop some of those screen grabs in to show what we're talking about because it's really interesting stuff. All right. Now, you know, that's that's also a different class because I know most of the um, most of the ship modelers that had a club up in DC uh, kind of frowned on plastic models. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, because somebody else designed it and made it. It's yeah, not an art. But but you know, the 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 thing that I always uh, grimaced about was the fact that you can start out with a plastic model, but it doesn't always end up like that. You mean you were modifying it? Yeah. Yeah. The plastic model can be modified. And now, now most of the uh, most of the ship models, unless you want to spend a real fortune for one, mm -hmm. is, are made out of uh, resin kits. Uh, right. <clears throat> Iron Shipwright is one of the companies. I forget who the other one is, uh, but they they built uh, like one seven hundredth. Uh, I I haven't never I have never seen a large. That's pretty small. Yeah. One seven, one to seven hundred. And it's detailed too. Oh wow! Of course. Well, you're going to have to definitely use magnifying glasses. Of course, they on one of their one of their kits they made a mistake because they put the doors um, in the uh, ship. They had them going the wrong way. Most ship doors open from the back to the front because you're sailing forward. So they want the doors to close. Right. All right. So well, they would open out. They open when they open out. They open against the way you're traveling, right? So that once you're out of there, it, it can automatically close back. Oh, right, right. You know, and then you got to dog them down <laughs> if yeah. you're on the inside and don't want it really coming in. And it's like yeah. the uh, it's like the scuppers. You know, they're they're made to let water back out to sea, but try to stop it from coming in when you get hit by a wave. Right. Yeah. So right. that's cool. Well, we've got some sailors in the in the class, you know, yeah. Perry, Tubner, um, John Lark, uh, <coughs> Glenn Leach. They're all modern sailors. Um, I don't. You don't say about it for a while. I thought about I, not, not sailing, but getting a, a bass boat and flying oh. down the river. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun. Um, I was thinking about canoe and kayaks and stuff like that. Judy and I used to go canoeing up the Hillsborough River. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. That's, that's pretty. But Judy doesn't, Judy doesn't swim. So I'm very cautious about getting her out in the water. Uh, you know, it's called a life vest. I know. I and know. it's inflatable when you you can get them with the automatic releases that inflate as soon as you hit the water. Yeah, but they cost money. She's not worth it. <laughs> no. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, All right, let's move on to Phil's question. Oh, 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 okay. Well, that's, that's a good one. Um, I told him that you 
have a, a a model that you made in the Smithsonian. Yes. In the air and space. Yes. But you never elaborated on it. What what it is? What is it? What's the subject? And it, is it in a museum such that we could maybe I could go and see it? Well, let's see. And was uh, it a commercial project? Did you get paid for it? No. Okay. No. How did you get it? How did you get selected? Um, a guy named Ernie Pasmani, who works for the Smithsonian, asked us to do it. And uh, was it a team build? Excuse me a minute. Go ahead. That's aftershock. He's got a bark collar on, so it gets work. work. Uh, no, it's um, the Smithsonian supplied the models. Um, and we built them. Uh, each, each, each person took one of the models and built them and painted them. And they were... Uh, Excuse me a minute. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Uh, back. And uh, like I say, we we built them, painted them, uh, put uh, crew figures in them. Uh, what these what, were these your aircraft? These were all aircraft. Okay, World War II or modern or what, mixed? Mixed, because the B-29, B-24, um, there's an A-10 in there. Uh, what was the media? Plastic. Oh, was it? What yes. was the scale? Uh, 48. The standard 48. Standard 48, one quarter of an inch to a foot. Um, and uh, it's about 10 or 12 models. Is it uh, a diorama? No, they were, they were, um, How would originally they, they were up on the second floor uh, between the Navy and the World War II wing upstairs at the far end of the uh, Air and Space Museum. Oh. Um, the uh, they built they they took the models and put uh, eyelets in the tops of the wings and uh, made a mobile out of it. Oh, okay. And the last time I saw it, it was downstairs on the first floor in front of the store. They moved it down there. Were they selling the models in the store? Oh yeah, they sell okay. the models in the store. Okay. Models, books, space paraphernalia. Right, right. Uh, frozen, uh, freeze-dried ice cream, <laughs> take your choice. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, let's let's go to friends. All right. You're uh, you're missing some of your high school friends. I remember we talked about this once. What who was the first one you mentioned? Uh, probably Kenny Flynn. He was he was my best man at uh, my second marriage. Oh, to Pat. To Pat, yeah. Um, actually, he was there. Um, and uh, Jamie Seaman was there from school because mm. at that time she was living over in Fort Lauderdale. You know, that's something. Uh, there were about uh, 34, I counted one time, there was like 34 or, or better um, people that we went to school with that had moved to Florida. Yeah. Uh, I think Karen Kirk. Karen Krosnick? Kirker? Huh? Kirker? 
I was going to say Karen Krosnick. I didn't think she was here. Um, no, Kirker. Kirker. Kirker the Corker. Yeah, I think she was here. She was uh, uh, living in Florida. I think I heard it one time. Mm -hmm. um, I miss Kenny. I used to, you know, when he, uh, he, he was really down after his uh, divorce. Um, yeah, I, I remember, he, I remember he, sitting next to him in, at a, at a restaurant in Maryland, we got together and went to, uh, yeah, uh, uh, for many I, I went up, up I went up for Vernon Kennedy's uh, funeral. Yeah. And uh, I sat next to Kenny. He was he was really quite depressed. Yeah, uh, and I think, I mean, this is my own opinion. Nobody else's. I think the depression actually is what killed him. Could have uh, contributed. Contributed to his death. Um, the other was uh, the other one was Jimmy Burke. He was my best man at my first wedding. Well, didn't you do something with cars with with Burke? Uh, be involved in your car, car. Yeah, more or less. Uh, not really anything serious. Um, I mean, not not when we were. Uh, he he moved down here to. My, the story goes that he moved down here to St. Pete and to take care of his dad. Mm. And um, he was like married twice, maybe three times. I don't know. He has a daughter who lives up in Michigan somewhere. Um, he went, uh, he, uh, he, he, I heard he was part owner of a speed shop down here. Don't know. Can't prove it. Um, I know uh, he had a Falcon that he used to drag race in. Um, so y'all shared cars as something in common that, that you enjoyed? Yeah, kind of, kind of, sort of. Uh, I, I remember we went uh, roller skating out at Bladensburg one night. Jimmy was driving. And uh, we came back to the hot shop over in... Uh, I guess that's Capitol Heights, I think. Oh, we're just off of uh, Route 4, or what used to be Route 4, 5, no, 4. Uh, and uh, we were at the hot shop, and my uh, girlfriend at the time, we were having a hot fudge Sunday, and she took the whip, she took the whipped cream off, off the top of it and just pushed the took the whipped cream and, and pushed it up in front of Jimmy's ear with a spoon and just pulled it straight back and filled his ear up full of, <laughs> full of uh, whipped cream. His girlfriend did that? No, my girlfriend did that. Oh, at the time. wow. So that's a Pretty memory. seductive. Huh? I get, did she ask him if she could lick it off? No, <laughs> you better not have. <laughs> Anyhow, um, But he uh, he developed uh, the same as I had colon cancer. Oh wow! And um, has he passed? He's passed. He passed oh, away wow. a couple of years ago. And uh, you know he was somebody I could talk to. Uh, his brother lives up in uh, La Plata, uh, Maryland. Who who was that? Lives in La Plata. Uh, Jimmy's brother, Pat. Oh, okay. Patrick. He lives up in La Plata. He works for an engineering firm up there. What is that clicking? Is that your timer? Oh, no, that's um, uh, my uh, uh, notices. I, oh. I, don't, I don't know how to turn them off easily. I forget about it. It just dings and tells me, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. So, right. you know, um, other people I miss. Uh, from 
Hmm. Of course, Pat, I miss her. But uh, she she left at the at the end of the tenth grade. Um, what do you mean, Pat left? I thought you were married to Pat. I am, but I, she left the United States. Her her mom got married to a uh, sergeant in the Air Force. Well, you knew her in high school. Yes, knew her knew her from elementary school. Oh, I school. didn't know that. What was her maiden name? Uh, Rice. Rice. Yeah, and then it then it became when she was in junior high school. At the junior high, we her her stepdad adopted her, so her last name became Hernandez. Mm. And then from there, she uh, went to Japan. Um, <clears throat> got involved with a airman and uh, became pregnant mm -hmm. and got married. And uh, her name, his name was, uh, last name was uh, Iazoteles. Mm. And it Americanized, oh. American, that's how you pronounce it in Greek. Oh, Greek. But is the American last name is Iazoteles. Wow. Yeah. So that's, anyhow. Um, that's interesting. And other people. Let's see. Who else do I remember besides you and Phil Foster and Billy Adams? Yeah, it's not it's not so much who you remember. It's who who you miss. Yeah. E either they passed away and you can't. Jimmy Bell. Them. Jimmy Bell, Buster Brown. Yeah, Buster's still with us, right? Uh, I don't know if he is or not. Um, I know he lives down, uh, he lives down there next to, uh, McCall. McCall. Yeah. Or something like that's that. That's the last time I saw Buster, but he had cancer and he was fighting cancer at that time. I don't, I've not heard that he's passed. Well, I don't know. Um, well, we'll have to check up on him. Um, because Buster Buster went through basic training with me. Buster oh. and Jimmy Bell both went through basic training with me. Wow. Yeah. That must have been a gas. <laughs> it's sort uh, of like stripes, the three of you guys. <laughs> um well after after uh, after basic training, um I went off to Fort Lost in the Woods. Lost in the Woods, yeah. I never got to go. Fort Leonard Wood. Yeah. And there and then I ran it. That's where I ran into Jimmy Bell again. At uh while I was going through uh clerk school, he was going through uh pole climbers. He was going through what? Pole climbers. Oh, pole climbers. Yeah. Yeah. Signal. Signal Corps. So I ended up in the Signal Corps and I don't know where he ended up. And uh, I don't know. Uh, Adams, I saw on. Uh, Billy? Yeah. Billy, yeah. I caught up at. Uh, and the helicopter. Tainan, yeah. Not Tainan. Uh, oh, hell. Camp LBJ. Yeah, you've you've told me that story before. You were carrying a carbine or carbine, and you were on the. I was carrying no, I was carrying a forty-five at that time. I was on a courier flight. Yeah. Yeah. Flying I'm a signal that our internet is unstable, but I haven't seen any problems yet. No, neither have I. Um, but. Uh, so you were on courier duty, right? So last, Vietnam? last three months I was there. Yeah. I got enough, hour, I got enough hours uh, riding in a chopper to get an air medal and three three oak leaf clusters. <laughs> I always wanted an oak leaf cluster. <laughs> oh no. Uh -uh. The, 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 the closest I ever got to that was a peanut cluster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. 
But uh, I'm wearing it. <laughs> I, uh, and Adams was coming down to uh, was coming down to uh, our outfit because his brother-in-law, yeah, was there, was in there, and he all and he told me that he he had run into Phil Foster while, uh. he, while he was there. So I'm thinking, you know. How are you getting around to all these places, Billy? Because I don't know what your job was. So how was he getting around? I mean, what was he doing? I have no idea what he was doing so that he could travel from post to post to post to post. You know, uh, Maybe he was in MI or something, military I intelligence. I have no idea. Well, have, we'll have to call him up and ask him, hey, Bill. You know, <laughs> I you have no idea. Uh, yeah. What you did in the past is what you did in the past. Yeah. You know, it's like race, it's like racing sports cars or whatever you want to say. Yeah. Did a little of that too. I, this is enjoyable, but let's keep to our yes. agenda. Let's yeah. go on to life writing and. Uh, I, I'm not really prepared to do this, but what a, I have here a draft of my uh, write up here. Uh, it's called Lady, Cash, and Hannah. Uh, Lady and Cash were the horses that I had when I was yeah. a teenager, and Hannah was our milk cow. And I wrote, I wrote a 13 page memoir for my grandkids who just started riding. Yeah. And of course, Hannah, the milk cow, we had to go through all the milking stories and squirting milk and carrying buckets of hot water and all that crap. So anyway, that's been that that's been occupying my time for uh, it taken about two months, you know, included with everything. But I finally um, let me see here. I finally this is a uh, I finally put it into a. Uh, a holder. Look. This is this is uh whoop, this is Mike Davis and his horse. Yeah, this is me with, that picture on cash. Yeah, I posted that a couple of times, and that's one of my better pictures of sports in action. But anyway, that was a short 13-page with picture memoir in 12-point type. So it's meant for 10-year-olds. And, and my sons who act like 10 year olds from time to time. And uh, I have just begun, how should I put it? Become fascinated by documenting one's life, reading memoirs, writing uh, personal histories. Like, and you said it, that your wife, Pat, um, was writing basically an annual letter that was biographical for the two of you. Yeah, a lot basically. of people do that. Yeah, I know. Um, oh. Well, it's a good thing. It's, yeah. It really is a good thing. So I, 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 I sort of am, I'm not trying to convince you, but I'm trying to convince our classmates to one, write, it's very good for your soul to, to write an annual you know, summary of what you did that year. Secondly, um, I think people at our age need to be concerned about who's going to write their obituary. And if, if famous people can arrange their own funerals and describe what they want in them and all that kind of stuff, who they want to speak for them or about them, I... I, I commend people to, um, at, at, at the very least, to look at um, what's it called, legacy.com. They, mm -hmm. have, they have some helpful, helpful hints on how to write an obituary, how to, you know, what to expect with a funeral, how to make funeral arrangements and things like that. Judy had to bury both of her parents. And um, of course, my parents had put everything together. I didn't have anything to do with it, except write my dad's obituary. And I screwed that up. Because I didn't, I of my brothers, 
I was the one that worked with him most. I knew him best. And yet uh, there was so much that I didn't know about him that I left out of his published obituary. So I feel bad about that. In 1998, my, a couple of my cousins, one of my cousins is an event planner and they got together and had a huge Walker family reunion. And one of the things they wanted to do was come up with a family biography. Oh, oh, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't have a format. I didn't know what to include. I didn't want it to sound like an, uh, uh, what do you call it? A, a resume or yeah. a curriculum vita. I wanted to put some personality into it. So I've spent the last 15 years trying to understand how to do that sort of thing. And what I've just recently discovered this year is that autobiographies are not all that commercially popular, but memoirs, memoirs are, and they make money with memoirs. So people start to teach these things and the people who teach it, they're from community college teachers all the way up to you know full professors with PhDs. They have started writing how-to books and there's a whole bunch of uh, eBooks out there that you can get for not so much money yeah. that tell you the different way. And they're all different. It's fascinating, just fascinating. You yeah. know, memoirs. Uh, somewhere was written in Stratsville's notes about uh, named a couple of us and that we would be working for uh, you know, it was kind of like what we were going to be doing in right, right. from graduation. Right. And it had me as working class, for the class for, prophecy for Jaguar. <laughs> well, didn't work for Jaguar. You could didn't have been a designer. Ford. Didn't work for uh, any car company. Yeah. I did drive a sports car. Uh, Raced it down at uh, Upper Marlboro at the old sports car track down there. Yeah. But. Uh, you ought yeah. to write that up. I think it's, I think it's great to, to document your memories. You because know. when you start writing, you start remembering. Well, you know, who was it there? Uh, I want to say Shoemaker was a teacher in junior high school. Who was uh, English. Uh, English literature, not English literature. Social studies, wasn't he? Well, it was a man, right? Man. Uh, was he like seventh grade teacher? Junior high? He was junior high. It was like uh, eight, seven, seventh, seventh, sixth, or eighth. yeah, uh, seventh, seventh or eighth grade. Yeah, because uh, he had a, at that time, he had us write uh, stories. Just a yeah. story. Um, well, I got an A plus on it. Great. Because I, he said I was writing in the third person. Mm -hmm. Which is either neither you nor me, but somebody else observe it. Us, yeah. Yeah. We, you, they. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, it's pretty. It's pretty complex and it's pretty interesting. Well, uh, I thought about writing for a while, but you know. Well, I do it for a hobby. Well, see, your hobby is that. Mine is bending plastic and heating plastic and, yeah. and chewing on plastic, you know. That's right. But, well, anyway, that's that's uh, um, basically journals, yeah, obituaries, memoirs, yeah. Mm -hmm. or annual Christmas letters. They're all excellent and... Um, trying to think. I talked to a friend of mine that I knew when I was at Maryland the second time. And he was, uh, he was a chemical engineer. And we've reconnected. And he told me that his brother was doing the genealogy in his family. And that they were one of the families that um, founded Falmouth, uh, Massachusetts. 
and it just so happens it's on Cape Cod. Just yeah. so happens I have two engineer buddies uh, from my military unit who own property on in Falmouth, and one of them was the city engineer <laughs> or the city sanitation engineer. I can't remember. Anyway, it it connects. It helps yeah. people connect. I sent my uh, my uh, short little memoir out to a few friends, and they never knew that I lived on a farmette, or they never knew that I had to milk a cow or ride a horse. You know, why should I tell them, you know, yeah. but now they know. Anyway, that's the end of that topic, unless you have something you want to share. No, I got a, um, a genealogy, well, I guess you could call it genealogy. Uh, a cousin sent me uh, years ago that traces us traces the Browns back a very long way. And from what I understand from it is that instead of immigrating to the East Coast, they went up the Mississippi River and then came East from there. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty, I've never heard people doing that, but that's pretty interesting. You know, that's the best I can figure out about it. That's, you know, um, I, I love range. The, yeah, I love the geography of my family. Uh, it's very, very quickly in a nutshell. They, the Morrison on my mother's side, the Morrisons came from Scotland. Yeah. In 1700s. Eight, in 1806, my third great grandfather was born, John Hunter. He went to what is now Princeton Theological College, mm -hmm. married a New York or New Jersey gal. They sailed 1836 to India to be missionaries. missionaries. And, and she died on arrival. He married again. She died. He married a third time. And that was my great, great, great grandmother had seven kids. Where is that picture? Oh, this is good because I can post this. This is a picture of my uh, grandfather and the seven kids in his family. <laughs> and, and, um, and his father was a minister who went to uh, uh, Princeton, went back. He married another missionary in, in India. They were from Massachusetts. Anyway, they all came back here in uh, 1900 and moved to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then for whatever reason, he moved to Louisiana, went back and married my grandmother from Dubois, Pennsylvania, took her down to uh, the Bayou country where they were reclaiming land. And you see, I, I got this story down. I tell it so many times and I'm, I got to get it all written down, but in, in, the pictures and everything so it just fascinates me i think of my my mother's family in uh in geography terms of geography like you were saying yeah really fascinating well you know it, it's my maternal grandfather uh, came from I want to say Ireland, and that's where all the kids get their red hair from. Do you, do you know? Do you know what time period he came? Uh, no, but uh, was it part of the famine or before the famine? Well, the only the, I only checked back to nineteen twenty. Oh, okay. All right. Um, to the uh, the census. The census. Yeah. And, uh, my grandmother was from over in St. Mary's County, I think. I think originally. Maryland, Maryland you're talking yeah, about. Maryland. Um, and she was uh, a hall. And he was a gray, so. And that left, left the rest of us out in the air. 
Oh, that's that that's on that's that was your maternal grandfather. Maternal grandfather. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's really fascinating. Do you want to talk about guns? Sure. What do you want to know? Um, because I got rid of a whole bunch of them. Nothing really. I mean, I know I know I know enough about guns that I don't want to own one. Um, and, and and the reason the reason is I don't trust people. People get emotional. Guns are fine in and of themselves, but um, as you I say, a gun by itself is an inanimate object. Yeah, yeah, piece yeah. of iron. Yeah. Piece of, well, steel, but yeah. yeah. Well, it depends on. Oh, we we were talking. We about, were talking about um, black cast powder, iron, cast black? iron, can, cannons, cast cannons. iron cannons. Yeah, and. What what do you what do you know about about casting a cannon tube? It's um, well, it's done with a sand mold most times. Right. There is a core that goes down it. Uh, that they put into the sand mold just so that you get a, uh, a non-drillable surface, basically, so you don't have to drill out the where the shot is. What um, do they make? Is that a bag of sand, like a big sock? Uh, they are, when you sand cast, it's a, now they use chemicals in it, but um, it's really the they make a master the master is put into half of a mold the and the and the uh sand is packed around it right all right then they take and flip it and do the other half of the mold right so that they uh, so that when they separate it they separate it take the original piece out and close the mold back up and they but before they do that they pour two usually put two pour holes in it in the sands in the in the sand so that they can pour the cast uh the casting into it the whatever metal it is oh so so it's sort of like the lost wax method where they 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 make a destroyable master uh yeah and it basically. and it melts out yeah the loss that's okay. because you're making the you're making the mat mat you're making the master out of wax right and then you coat it with for all intents and purposes uh uh right yeah. no you don't you you use a uh a ceramic you coat the wax master with the ceramic. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So that when you uh, heat, not only do you solidify the mold by letting it air dry and then throwing, but when you throw some heat to it, it gets really hard and the, mac, and the wax melts out of it and then you just turn it upside down or whatever you're going to do to pour the uh, metal or whatever it is into it. I see. So, so let me, let me see if I can understand by, by repeating what you said, you, you create a master out, out, of, wax. Of, out of wax. Right. And then, and then you use sand casting to have two halves of a ceramic mold so that you can. Well, that's not when you're doing a barrel. You were talking. We're talking two different things here. All right. I want to do the barrel, right? All right. So we're talking sand casting. Sand casting has been around for ages. Yeah, but but you 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 can't do a barrel by doing two halves. Yes, you can. What? How do you weld them together? You don't weld them together. You take and you 
in one one half of the mold, you you put a a pour and a outlet for it. Right. All right. Now, to my way of thinking, the old uh, they weren't drilling those barrels. They, right. They're they smooth pour bore barrels, so that they were they were made that way. So subsequently, it's actually not a two piece mold; it's a three piece mold because you have to have a, a piece going down the barrel to keep it round. Right. All right. So at that point, when you got your three piece mold together and you got your input and your output uh, uh, tunnels, then you just, then you pour your uh, uh, cast iron into it and then wait for it to cool. Then you take and disassemble the mold and take your uh, cannon barrel out of there or your cannon out of there and then clean it up. So you're you're pouring the cannon barrel as one piece? As one piece. Okay, the, yeah. When you said sand mold, I was thinking sand molds laying on the ground and pouring into that. So that's what I was trying to figure out how to do. Okay, I got it, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's 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 different from uh, taking a uh, rifling button button and roar and and taking it down the barrel of a a gun or a shotgun for that matter. Shotguns not so much because you you usually get those uh, or in these days you usually get them already at the diameter you want them and just put them together. <laughs> and then there's a lot of uh, um, Locks and and lock, stock, and barrel. So 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 a, a modern a modern rifle barrel is bored out. Yes. So they yes. take they depending, take depending they take, on depending on the side, but usually they're not rifle. Right. Unless like you unless the person. Uh, and yes, smooth bore. How unless you're using. Uh, uh, If you ever been to oh that place in Virginia, Jamestown, not Jamestown, where they have all the old houses. Yeah, Williamsburg. Um, Williamsburg, yeah, they have a gun. They have a gun shop there. Really? Not, not Yeah, and they sell they sell the impl the implements there, the guns, but um, they have like a four or five thousand dollar price tag on everyone that's built yeah but they but they actually uh do do the uh bear uh, do the barreling uh, down there they get the barrels now the barrels that they get were were manufactured somewhere else right but the uh lands and grooves in the barrel they cut their them right there and they're all to the same size I have to uh, excuse myself for one second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my, uh, what do you call it, camera dark, and I'll be uh, right back. Go ahead. <laughs> I can still hear you. It's okay. <laughs> what are you laughing at? My picture? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me tell you about that picture. That is, that is a. Uh, a screenshot of a picture of a portrait that I had done uh, in South Florida. I was out of work and I saw this guy's work in a, in a uh, what do you call it, a, an exhibition. And I, I went to him and I said, how much would you charge me to uh, uh, paint my picture, my portrait? And he said, well, I can do it for $300. And well, he knew I was out of work. And um, I said, wow. He said, I get $10,000 for an oil painting. And he showed me some of the ones that he had done. Just phenomenal work. But this was called oil pastel. Yeah. And I sat, I sat for him for six hours. And you can't see it here, but uh, <clears throat> I was wearing a paisley tie. And uh, he said, 
you know, rather than have you sit, let me take that tie home and uh, I will I will paint from the original. You wouldn't believe the, what do you call it? The, um, oh, oh, I'm trying to think of what you call it. The, um, the detail in that Paisley tie, yeah. it's incredible. He, he charged me 300 bucks. And I, I said, hmm, how, do you have any place where I can get this framed? He went to a friend of his and he gave me a nice light frame. And we're, we're talking about a huge picture. We're talking about, you know, four feet high, two and a half feet wide, three feet wide. Anyway, uh, I got the, I got the frame for 200 bucks. Hmm. Unbelievable. My yeah. second, my second wife, probably she was at, angry. She was moving the picture. She took it down and dropped it and broke the glass and broke the frame. frame. Cost her $500 to have it reframed. Oh, Lord. Wow. Anyway, my, my wife doesn't like it. She said, I didn't know you then. Well, I was in my like late 40s. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't move down here until I was, what, 57? Yeah, 57. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Were you still working when you were down here? Or no. did you retire? I retired. I, re uh, I retired in 2003. I, uh, I got looking at my time in and I got uh, 39 years, something like that. I only needed government, you needed 40, 40 years and 11 months. And I just said- To retire? Well, yeah, that would be at full, full benefits. Yeah. Is eighty percent. Wow. Which is eighty percent of what you were making when you were uh, working. So that was with the D.C. government. Yes. But by the same token, it was uh, federal government because I was. Yeah. I I started when it was still part of the federal government when D.C. was still part of the federal government. So I, all my uh, money went into civil service. Right, right. No. And then in 19, 1986, they changed all that up. They, uh, anybody that came in in 86 and after was, uh, 401ks and stuff like this. Right, right. My, uh, my brother got caught up in that. Um, Mike, McCall, I think, changed his up to, because um, he was working, he's working telephone. Because mm -hmm. I ran into him a couple, couple times where I used to work uh, in the building. They, um, the switchboard up on the fourth floor. Yeah, I think it was up on the fourth floor uh, of the municipal center had a switchboard in there in the telephone. Mm -hmm. But they also they also sold uh, cokes out of there at night. <laughs> you know, sold coke or cokes. Cokes. <laughs> C o k e s, as hey, in soda pop. Since since we were we were talking about um, friends that we miss, and I was talking about um, uh, about obituaries and i've been posting some obituaries can you tell me who this is let me see if i can get it who's that sitting with mike i don't know that's arthur english, english with, the, yeah. with the red with the red beard that's right and he he had uh, i talked to his wife i haven't posted his obit yet but I talked to his wife and she, she said that Art hurt his back and he was in so much pain. The, the doctors provided him with a lot of painkillers and he was on painkillers for two years and it destroyed his interior organs. I wouldn't doubt it. Down. You know, they just, uh, 
somebody just got one of the manufacturers just got hit with a big thing for oh years. yeah before you go there do you know who that is without my glass that's part of the call but you know. <laughs> barb i'm put i'm putting this up because barb i invited her to come on uh with uh on on this event the zoom thing and she said i'm camera shy and i said well i don't think you're shy at all <laughs> that's why i'm showing her picture there yeah. we are we've been on for about an hour so, so time to leave yeah yeah unfortunately thank well, you I won't, I won't see you next week because it's about this time i'll be starting the ham to cook for christmas dinner oh okay okay well i'll i'll well let me think here what what is next next week 25th is 21st. it christmas yeah well, uh, today's the 17th 24th. okay so i will i will make an announcement that i will not be on this this channel <laughs> on christmas day or christmas eve it'll be chris it, it would be christmas eve Dave. yeah yeah so that's the 24th yeah yeah okay well uh, i will I'll see be, you after that yeah maybe. probably hopefully yeah. Some, hope somebody else joins for a while i mean you know it's more interesting to hear from other people than just me and you talking back and forth but you know well, you're, you're you're something that keeps me going <laughs> I, I hate to say it but you are <laughs> somebody well, to talk to you that's that is my um we didn't know each other well in in high school no and i didn't know you while you were working because i wasn't in the area but i have begun to appreciate you and your brilliance and your um skills um uh, and, and and if you have them around i would love to see some of your models and you can take oh. pictures and send them to me and i'll post them up here or whatever you know it, it it to me this by this is life writing what we're doing yeah. now this is autobiographical and yeah. so uh, you know i've i've come to appreciate you and look forward to my thursday afternoons with george <laughs> <laughs> thursday afternoons with george okay <laughs> well listen i i i Put read me a, in the park right <laughs> i i read i read a a, a memoir of a guy it says Tuesdays with Murray. Yeah. Have you ever heard that one? I've heard I've there, there there's been a, you know, uh what is it? Like there was a movie called Sun was it Sunday in the Park or something like that. Yeah. But you know, it's it, it it's just, you know, like I say, it's it's something um to keep me going, seeing a familiar face, somebody I could talk to, that type of deal um i had a conversation with um with uh bob riley robert riley the guy yeah. we call stuff or weasel yeah. bait. um we chat from time to time and and he lost his wife to cancer and he lost jay paget yeah and summer's gwen his yeah. his his three best friends in the world He's got Deacon a, was uh, Deacon was hard because he just lived up the street from me when I was growing up. He just Riley? Lived, no, Jay. Oh, Jay Patchett. Yeah. He just he lived you know up at he lived up at the corner of uh, Temple Hills and Downtown Road. Yeah. And yeah. He, um and and I don't know what his dad did uh, for a living, but I know his mom was a teacher, and. Uh, I know he had a younger brother that was uh, uh, handicapped. Really? Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He had a younger brother. Okay. Huh. Yeah. I believe he was younger. It, well, I think he he may have passed because they couldn't. They had a hard time finding relatives for his estate. Uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. But I just want to thank you for uh, sharing your time with me 
it's good for both of us. Yeah. And uh, that's, what, that's what motivates me. And someday uh, my relatives will look at this film and I'll go, hi. <laughs> uh, okay. So well, I got to go. All righty. Uh, I don't really have to go, but I do have to go because I've got to go down to McDonald's and get something to eat for dinner. There you go. <laughs> or across the street to uh, Subway. Yeah. One of the two. Yeah. Anyhow. All right, Dick. We'll Enjoy see your you. Christmas ham. I don't know. You know, the thing of it is, is that one week later uh, from Christmas Eve is going to be New Year's Eve. You sure you're going to be around? <laughs> Am I going to be around? Yeah. One New Year's Eve, you're going to be on the. Oh, wait, 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 wait. oh hey, I can't go. In. Let me look at my calendar. Okay. Next week is 24. New Year's Eve, the 31st. That's right. I'll be here. Okay. And, well, unless, unless my, uh, I mean, you, you'll get a, you'll get an invitation from me or, or an excuse. So all right. you'll, you'll know in, a, in advance whether I'll be here or not. Okay. We, don't, we don't go, we can't go anywhere. Yeah. We well, can't invite true. anybody in. And uh, you know what? Drink. I was thinking the other night, I said, they're going to have snow. I'm going back up to Maryland. <laughs> well, I, that's the one thing I miss being down here is snow. My uh, my friend who lives in Howell, New Jersey, said they were expecting seven inches. I talked to my brother in Bowie, Maryland, which is PG County. Yeah. And all they got was mixed rain and slush. No. And the sun yeah. came out and evaporated everything. Yeah. So you'd have yeah. you'd have to go to Western Maryland to get any snow or Pennsylvania. Well, well, you know, the thing of it is, is usually in Western Maryland, about the 10th, somewhere right around the 10th of November, is we usually when they have the first uh, snowstorm up there. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. up in it's up in the mountains, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, especially, you know, it's up there, up above Cumberland, Deep Creek Lake, that area. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, uh, gets mighty damn cold. I mean, in the middle of summer, Deep Creek Lake is freezing your butt off if you jump in well, that's why i live in lutes <laughs> yeah well you know i'm i'm all right over here on the coast with palm harbor yeah yeah you know, yeah but i was i was worried about uh that hurricane coming through last night and if you if you all had been affected by it because i'm you know i'm not uh, you're, you're you're talking tornado right tornado yeah yeah you know the difference <laughs> yeah well yeah, one's land based. Well, let, let, let me ask you this. This is for the other people who are listening. Um, when we had a tornado watch, we got our cell phone wake, woke us up with an alert. Did does your did you get any kind of an alert? No. Usually if there's something coming down, I get a call from Pinellas County. You got a telephone call. Yeah. Yeah, but well, I that's an alert. Well, I, mean, I didn't get anything last time. Uh, through this thing so you know they didn't call you no didn't get a call it was probably too damn quick i mean you know southern pinellas county down there at uh park uh they got really hit and i mean and they were talking the late people that were on the tv were talking about it came through so quick yeah in 45 seconds it was over my wife told me about it i didn't even know anything about it yeah now the thing, and it had it had to have some force because it tipped that uh, uh, semi trailer over onto a fence, mm. uh, ripped the roofs off all those buildings, and uh, one of the guys was talking about in his warehouse it blew the one of the doors straight back into the uh, um, the warehouse itself. So, you know, very good. Oh, hello. This is Richard Walker coming to you from my studio in Lutz, Florida. And I want to int not, not introduce you, but I wanted to show you that Judy, whoop, <clears throat> my wife, uh -oh, how do I do this? Uh, get this one. right here. This is my wife, Judy. And uh, she turned 74 in December. And we had uh, grandkids. 
Well, how should I put it? I can't point. Right here, grandkids, three grandkids there, and one grandkid over here. This is my son, John, and his wife. Whoop. <laughs> That's Serene. This is uh, Judy's sister, Beverly Fox. This is uh, her husband, Terry. And this is, uh, what's his name? Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, what is that? Airdrop from Judy Walker. I don't know what that is. Anyway, this is uh, over on this side is Judy's son and daughter-in-law. I'm gonna get out of the way here. Yeah, <clears throat> I can't. I can't point on this side. And this right here is my niece and her husband. And this is my other niece over here. And this is. Uh, <laughs> this is a. Uh, I mean, right here. <clears throat> This is uh, this is Judy's first oldest son and his wife and their her grandson. This is her other grandson who's in college. And let's see who's down here behind me. Mm. Oh, this is another. Uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. I can't. There she is. There's Amy. No, it's right here. Here's Amy, and then. Up, oh, these are our best friends here, the silver haired people. And uh, this is my brother and his wife. And I, they're right behind me and I can't, I can't get out of the way. This is sort of weird. And then there's somebody, somebody else behind me. Oh, who is that? Who is that? Mm, oh, that's my brother, Steve. Okay. So anyway. Just wanted to tell you that we had a 40 minute Zoom party for Judy on her birthday, and it was fantastic. Oh, Judy's sending me messages. Yep. Open in photos. No, save to downloads. All right. Now, what else did we have? Oh, here is uh, the. This is our dinette table, and this is uh, a card that the grandkids sent Judy. And here is the cake that I made uh, for Judy. And you can see, let's see, right here, right here. Ooh, yeah, this is um, uh, cinnamon, uh, chocolate, and uh, powdered sugar. And this down here is apricot preserves from France. We got that from Costco. <sighs> what a delicious cake. Oh, by the way, it was a sugarless cake. Fantastic. And it, it was gone in two days. And I, I made it a day ahead. It never dried out. It was fun. So we went and bought two more. Just And we got a chocolate one to try out. Ooh, we love chocolate. But I hate chocolate cake because they always dry out. So anyway, we had a wonderful time there around the 9th of uh, December. That was a Wednesday. Let me see here. What am I going to use for a backdrop today? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, I think I'll go back to the colorful one. This is, this is, uh, these are bromeliads and behind it, the big plant are swamp lilies. <clears throat> so, now I wanted to talk about, I'm going to share the screen here for a second and I'm going to pick the browser and here is a fantastic set of videos, um, not this individual, but the owner of this boat, he's rebuilding a uh, boat called the Tally Ho, it's a wooden boat and I'm learning how boats are built. It is extremely complex and very fascinating to, to watch. Let me find out where he, oh, okay. Oh, here is the structure of the boat right here. I'm gonna show you. 
and you got the bracing and they're uh, got all the ribs in. Here's George. Hey, George, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Um, I was just doing a little presentation. I'm sharing my screen and I'm showing a uh, fellow who's building a boat, rebuilding a boat called the Tally Ho. And uh, this, is, this is the owner. You can see all the clamps that he has. And where else? He had a, a neat little, um, oh, well, I'll, I'll do that later. Uh, I was just showing that um, here is a, a, a famous English model builder. I thought you mentioned somebody. His name is George Reed. Not you me. No. Well, uh, he's got a series of eight, um, eight short videos, ten to fifteen minutes, and uh, he tells about how he got into model building and how he did it as a profession, and uh, and I'm glad you're here at this point in time because I want to talk to you again about model building and. Uh, here is the, uh, what do you call it? Um, the, uh, the snippets. I call list, it snippets. Uh, playlist, playlist in, <laughs> in Facebook that I created to share with you. And this one starts off, this is an hour and 40 minutes. This is a class. This is the curator of shipyard, um, board presented, what do they call Navy board and admiralty uh, uh, models. And according to the George Reed, nobody really knows why people built these things, but I imagine there's a different reason for each one. But anyway, the, let me tell you about this real quick. Um, this is the Naval Academy Museum in Annapolis. And he has two uh, cadets there, a boy and a girl, and he's teaching them about the ships that participated in the War of 1812. Well, yeah. <laughs> and let me turn the volume up a little bit so I can hear you better. Okay, this one is the history of the Royal Navy. Whoop, didn't mean to do that, well, Sorry. It's okay. Um, this is uh, a couple of Philip Reed ones. Here's one designing a model making station at 16 minutes. I haven't watched that one yet. Some of these I haven't watched all the way. Here's the history of the Royal Navy steam. Some of these are, you know, World War II ships. Yeah. Anyway, that was... Can, can we do something for um, the people who might want to watch our, our little discussion here? Can, well, we, can we come up with a, an agenda? Sure. Some, th some things that we'd like to talk about and then... Anything. Well, I'm, I'm looking to you for topics that you... Oh, oh here, I talked to Phil, Phil Foster today and... Uh, and he has a question for you, uh, uh, but the you know I'm interested in modeling. Yes. And so on the topic of models. Yes. We that's number one. Right. Is there is there a topic that you would like to talk about that maybe the classmate our classmates would be interested in memories or from high school or oh. You know, the, the one guy now. The Can you put it in one word? <laughs> so we get, we're, we're making a list here. I take it you have an idea. <laughs> Just friends. Uh, friends, okay, friends. Two friends, two friends that I miss. Yeah, that's good. Friends that we miss, that's good. Yeah. Because I have, I have the um the high school yearbook all the pages 
uh, scanned. And when we talk about somebody, I can get their high school picture and put it in, easily put it into the video so people can see who we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So number three. Um, hmm. Number three. Your move. Oh, my move. Okay. Well, the first thing that comes, um, uh, okay, I know I, I did something recently that uh, I may want to share, and I'm going to talk about life writing, and that's basically memoirs, journals, yeah. um, autobiographical stuff. I know you're, you're not into that sort of thing, are you? Not really. Uh... You know, once a year before she passed away, whenever we'd get Christmas cards, uh, Pat would uh, take and send out basically a, a biographical what's happened this year thing. Christmas letter? The, the, yes, hold on a minute. Back. Okay. Okay, so life writing. Okay, yours is the next one, number four. And then uh, we'll stop there. Hmm. Anything you want to talk about? Anything I want to talk about? Fast cars and loose women? <laughs> Fast cars and loose women. I don't know any loose women. Otherwise, yeah, this room, I. I wouldn't be here. So I don't think we can talk about loose women. Um, you're interested in black powder guns? You were I've interested. Been. In car well, gunsmithing, I have been gunsmithing. Gunsmithing, yeah. You, you want to guns? Well, I'm interested in mechanics. So, and having having been in the military, as you know, and fired yeah. weapons, I'm interested in the mechanics. So, I will be happy to talk to you about that. Well, well, listen, I'm going to head out. I got to go cook my wife some dinner. So understood. We'll see you. See you. Bye. Look at it. <laughs>